So what do students already know about linear relationships by the time they get to sixth grade? Well, in third grade, they represented real world relationships using number pairs in a table and verbal descriptions. So that word number pairs, as they grow up, they're gonna start calling those ordered pairs. But for now in third grade, they talk about number pairs. And in third grade, they're looking at specifically additive patterns. So let's look at what that looks like. Here we have a bakery and the number of cookies the bakery makes is 12 more than the number of muffins. So that means I should be able to add 12 to my muffins to get my cookies. And the table that shows that the kids need to be able to say is the one that's the last choice here. So we add 12 and we get from our muffins to our cookies. It's an additive relationship. We have numbers paired up here and those are our number pairs. And so that's what third graders do with this. It's a real world example. Um, in fourth grade, students use input output tables and numerical expressions to generate a number pattern that follows a rule. And they start talking about the position of a value in terms of a sequence. Let's take a look at that. They also start looking at multiplicative patterns. Okay, so let's say that I have a number pattern and I have different terms in the sequence of that pattern. So then the position refers to the order in which those values fall. So my first value is 21. My second value is 42. My third value is 63. My fourth value is 84. And how can I describe the relationship between the position and the value? Well, I have a three column process chart. And so here the th missing column is the middle one, the one that tells me how I get from the position to the value. So in this example, we're looking at a multiplicative relationship and the answer choice is H. So I could just put drop that little column right into my process chart there and that would explain how I get from my position to my value. I do that by multiplying each position by 21 and that gives me the value. So this is a multiplicative pattern, right? Now in fifth grade, students need to recognize the difference between additive and multiplicative numerical patterns and they have to be able to do it in a table or a graph. So adding that graphical element to this means that the students need to know x coordinates and y coordinates. They need to know x values and y values. So let's see what that looks like. So here's two examples, one with a table and one with a graph. And the first question says, which statement about the pattern represented on the graph is true? The easiest way for me to evaluate these answer choices is going to be to figure out what the coordinates of these points are. So my first point is 1, 5. And my second point is 2, 6. And my third point is 3, 7, and so on. Um, I'm going to stop there just in the interest of time. But let's talk about how my x values are related to my y values. I can see that if I add 4 to my x value, I get my y value. So this is an additive relationship. If I increase x by 4, I get y. And that's the last answer choice here. The x coordinate is increased by 4 to create the corresponding y coordinate. So this is how um, analyzing numeric patterns on a graph looks in fifth grade. The next example over here is really both a verbal description and a table. It talks about Elsa and her friends and how they eat lunch. So there's a number of students that join at the table each day. And then the total number of students at the table. And what I'm really wondering is how do I get from the number of students joining to the total number at the table? So let's see. Um, I Three, does, I could divide eight by three. I wouldn't get a whole number result. Same story, seven divided by two. Again, not a whole number result. So let me look and see if there's an additive relationship here. How could I get from three to eight using addition? Ah, I could add five. Does that work for the next row? Yes, two plus five is seven. Eight plus five is 13. Okay, so this is an additive relationship. Five plus five is 10. So I now know that what's happening is that the number of students joining plus five is the total number of students at the table. So this is not a multiplicative relationship. It is an additive relationship. So now let's look at choice A. It says an additive relationship because the pattern is to add five to the number of students joining in order to get the total number of students at the table. And that's right, the number of students joining plus five is the number at the table. So this looks good to me. Choice C says an additive relationship 
because the number of students joining is less than the number of total number of students at the table. So that's not right. It's not less than that. So we know it's answer choice A, and that's the sort of work that we want to see our fifth graders doing with numeric patterns in verbal descriptions, graphs, and tables.